The starting grid for today's 23rd running of the Daytona 500. Ned Jarrett is standing on pit road alongside the leaders as they'll take the green for today's race. A very strong, a very strong field here on the front row. In fact, it's strong all the way through, Ken. One of the strongest 500s we've seen. Sitting on the pole is Bobby Allison of Hueytown, Alabama, a former winner of this Daytona 500, the favorite here today. From us at CBS, good luck, Bobby. Thank you, Ned. And splanking him on the outside is the car number 11 to be driven by Darrell Walter for Franklin, Tennessee, one of the fastest cars here. He's driving the Junior Johnson prepared car, always a strong car in the field. And in the second row here today are the Ford products. Neil Bonnet on the inside of the second row. He's been running very strong here. Neil, we understand that your dad was not able to be here with us today. Yeah, my dad had a heart attack a little while back. I just want to tell him to sit there in Birmingham, enjoy this thing, see if I can't win it for him. Well, we'll be watching what happens. And on the outside of Neil Bonnet on the second row is Benny Parsons. Benny, a former winner of the Daytona 500. He's driving the Bud Moore prepared car and another of the Ford products that do so well in the draft here. Starting in the third row is the car number 88, Ricky Rudd. And he had some problems with this car. Ricky, you were the last car on the line here this morning. What was wrong? Well, they changed, uh, ended up changing motors first thing this morning. And uh, they, they went ahead and put a different engine in it. And they had a little problem with the clutch, and they, had to, they found out after they put it all together, they had to pull the motor halfway back out and uh, change the clutch, and it cost them a lot of extra time. And it has to be some anxious moments for Ricky Rudd, not knowing exactly how this car will perform. On the outside of the third row is last year's Daytona 500 winner, Buddy Baker of Charlotte, North Carolina, one of the hardest chargers in all of auto racing. And then making up the fourth row here today is the current NASCAR champion, Dale Earnhardt. Dale, how do you feel? Great, Ned. Ready for it. He's ready for him. He's always ready. One of the hardest chargers, young lions in this sport. And flanking him on the outside of the fourth row is the king of stock car racing, seven-time Grand National Champion, six-time winner of the Daytona 500, Richard Petty. And Ken, that next row has a lot of talent in it also. Indeed it does, Ned. Let's now review for you the rest of the starting field that you'll be watching live today here on CBS. Moving to row number five, David Pearson, the Silver Fox 1970 Daytona 500 champion. And beside him, A.J. Foyt, the 1972 champion, driving for Jim Gilmore. In row number six today is Kyle Petty, the son of Richard Petty, who qualified well. And Terry Labonte, the fellow who won at Darlington one year ago for Billy Hagan. Row number seven, the winner of the Le Mans sports car race, Don Whittington. And from Bellingham, Massachusetts, Jeff Bodine. In row eight, Dave Marcus of Wasso, Wisconsin, and Bill Elliott, an outstanding runner from the southeast in his car number nine. Row number nine is car number 19, rookie Ronnie Sanders and the second CBS camera, Richard Childress. Row 10 will be Ronnie Thomas, and alongside him from Martinsville, Virginia, Buddy Arrington. In row 11, the offshore powerboat champion last year, Bill Ellswick from Florida, and the Burt Reynolds Hal Needham car driven by Stan Barrett. In row 12 is Glenn Jarrett, whose dad is down on pit road for CBS and Bruce Hill. In row 13, it'll be James Hilton of Inman, South Carolina, and Alabama's Jimmy Means. The 14th row is last year's Rookie of the Year, Jody Ridley, the Don Levy car, and Tommy Gale. Row 15, two-time Daytona champion, Cale Yarborough, and beside him, Minnesota's Blackie Wengren. The 16th row is Harry Gant, one to look for today, and the Virginia, number 68, Lenny Pond. In row 17, starting where his brother won this race from, Donnie Allison and Joe Milliken. In row 18, Indianapolis champion Johnny Rutherford and Billy Harvey of Florida. Row 19, Elliot Forbes Robinson, the great sport car driver, and Richard Brooks of California. In row 20 will be Don Sprouse, a rookie driver, and last year's indie rookie, Tim Richmond. Row 21, J.D. McDuffie, and the fellow who originally came from Horseshoe, North Carolina, Cecil Gordon in number 24. That is the starting grid for today's 23rd running of the Daytona 500. Two hundred laps, five hundred right, miles. Right, Last year, the fastest right, five hundred mile race now, ever run in the history of motorsport. Right here, Buddy Baker did it in the car that's on the pole today. Uh, ahead, Jimmy Means from Alabama, number fifty-two, so took one preliminary down. lap. His car is now on pit road. So forty-one cars are on the field as they move down and up turns three and four. Up on the thirty-one degree banking, pace car has its light off. 
Bill Gasway instructing the car. You can hear it. So when you come off of the step there as long as you can, hold it now. Don't 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 get too far inside yet. All right, come on like you're coming. Now step next to the grass when you come down here on your right. Pretty good start. All right, Mr. Starter. Pretty good start. turn goes car number 11 Neil whether the number 11 of Darrell Warren for the lead David Pearson went down to the apron as they came off the trial to try and sneak up a couple of places but it didn't really do him a lot of good back straight away coming to full song swapping positions 28 goes back in front Alabama's pulled up pit road back on the track. Here they come for the first time by. All 42 cars are now on the track. Coming down to complete lap number one. Allison in first, Neil Bonnet in second, Walter is in third, Buddy Baker is in fourth. In the fifth spot is Ricky Rudd. Sixth spot is David Pearson. And the field is back into turns one and two. Just 199 laps to go, David. That turn two is going to give him some trouble today, I'm sure, with a strong win. Buddy Baker drafting there, being followed very closely by Neil Bonnet. Not the outside, then on the inside comes Darrell Walton, car number 11. The junior Johnson prepared number 11, streaking along the bottom. The Wood Brothers have their 21 on the outside. There you see the leader, Bobby Allison. <laughs> Baker in the red car number one now lying in the fourth spot. He's trying a different spoiler today and this is the first test laps he's given that spoiler. I tell you, he's a brave man to make a major change like that before a 500 mile race without trying it first. Benny Parsons lies seven, going eight is Dale Earnhardt. Leaders in two. Will Bobby Allison be the second man in Daytona 500 history to win the pole position, the qualifier, and then go on to win the Daytona 500? Only once before in history has it happened. Well, Bobby Allison and Neil Bonnet putting a bit of daylight between themselves and the rest of the field here as they come around turn three into turn four. The Alabama gang all together up front. There's Kaylee Arborough still trying to fight his way up to the track. Yarborough is on the move at number 27. You see him up on the wall, fighting his way around rookie Ronnie Sanders. Now back to the leaders as they approach turn one. And Bobby Allison and the kid he began in racing, Neil Bonnet, try to draft away from the field, but that's not working. They're being caught up in the back straightaway. There's four very fast cars. Neil Bonnet trying for the first time to get by. Bobby Allison down, and he slingshots by, and that's a thing we're going to see a lot of today because they're driving into the wind. The second car is so protected by the first car, he picks up momentum and slingshots by, and we're going to see a lot of that today. Ford Thunderbird out in front. Bonnet first, Allison second. Running third, Darrell Walker. Maintaining that fourth position, Buddy Baker, last year's winner, now on the Haas Ellington team. There you see the automobiles coming out of turn number two and in the back straightaway as Baker sustains and stays in there. And Bonnet really begins to show some power and some authority with a Wood Brothers car. And Buddy Baker's pulled himself up to third and now pulling himself up to second in the draft of Bobby Allison, who goes back into the lead again. The uh, Fords of Neil Bonnet and Benny Parsons showed very good form in the 125-mile qualifying races. They proved to be exceptionally good at drafting, but not very good at leading. And Obviously, they want to try and change that today. Falling back to third is Neil Bonnet. In that fourth position is Darrell Waltrip. Baker taking a shot in second. Buddy Arrington's car. Report that car may be throwing some smoke, as is Ricky Rudd's number 88, and the observers on the four points of the track are watching those two cars carefully. Buddy 
Lee Baker in command for the first time. Baker out in front. See that car hop and tremble as it comes off turn four. It almost looked to me as if the wheel actually came off the floor. It can't have done, but it was bouncing over that tunnel entry. That's a very tricky part of this course, and as they go through the trial, they're side by side. A lot of shifting of positions. Neil Bonnet, the Wood Brothers, number 21, seeking their fifth Daytona 500 victory. It will be the first for Neil Bonnet. The Wood Brothers have been here since the very beginning and had some great winners in Kaylee Armour, A.J. Foyt. Here comes a shot on the inside, and Baker, last year's winner, goes back in front. Allison, the 77 champion. Waltrip goes to third. Bonnet dropping to fourth. Not so. Look at that running. Waltrip got out of the draft there. Bonnet was still in it and managed to retake third place away from Waltrip who tried to slip down the inside. The fifth position is David Pearson. Six is Earnhardt. Seventh is Ricky Rudd. Running eighth is Labonte. Buddy Baker, last year's winner, now leading this race. Dale Earnhardt's come up to join that draft for the lead. Buddy Baker, who's been here since 1960. 22 years of trying, he won this race a year ago. Now with a new team. The team that first Donnie Allison, then David Pearson go for a year ago. Now Baker at the controls, he's being passed. Bobby Allison back to front. Neil Bonnet, the Alabama gang, again showing their authority. Bobby Allison has got the car, there's no doubt about it. He uh, is showing tremendous form here. I don't think he's going to be able to run away and hide, but he's going to be so strong all afternoon. It's going to be very difficult for these other guys to really consistently stay out of front. Eight laps complete. Eight complete. Yeah, they, now you see that front, that leading bunch has picked up cars. We have Ricky Rudd there, Dale Earnhardt, David Pearson, and Richard Petty is winding them in. And so right behind Richard Petty is uh, Don Whittington in car number 93, the yellow number 93. So this lead car draft, he started up as a four car draft, is rapidly building up into a ten car draft. Back comes Neil Bonnet. Bonnet going back for the lead another time. You have to be so careful out here. But how can anyone be patient and prudent at nearly 200 miles per hour? Well, it's very difficult, and I think the story in the pit area over the last two days has been mental strain, and these guys, these cars are twitching a bit more, and I think there's going to be a lot of uh, worn-out brains as this race develops and the day goes on. Look at that car, look at that lead draft now. One, two, three, four, we're up to about 12 cars in it. And the car in front, Neil Bonnet. The Wood Brothers from Patrick County, Virginia, one of the great car construction outfits, a family who built great racing cars, continue to put a car up in front year after year, here at the Speedway. And now you're with Terry Labonte. He's right behind David Pearson. You're with him at 190 miles per hour. Look at the vibration. Look at his hands as he works through that banking. Terry Labonte, in fact, is in that lead draft. He's right at the back of it. There's David Pearson in front of him. David Pearson is lying in uh, uh, wherever he is, fifth spot. Now, Terry Labonte is off to a great start. He finished second at Riverside, California this year. He's out of Corpus Christi, Texas, and he is a very good driver. Now we have trouble on Buddy Arrington's car in the pits. They're changing the right front tire. We are working the 11th lap. You're in lap number 11. Arrington, Virginia driver, on pit road. Meanwhile, back straight away. Leader coming down to turn number three. Neil Bonnet in front, Bobby Allison in second. A Ford Thunderbird in front, a Pontiac in second. And car number one, an Oldsmobile runs in third in the 23rd annual running of the Daytona 500. lap 14 of the 200 laps of this year's Daytona 500. The observers, NASCAR observers watching car number 11 for smoke out of Darrell Waltrip's car. Take a look at this replay just two laps ago. Watch what happens in the back up here. Don Whittington, car number 93, just gets out of shape there in the trial. Yellow he car. and Benny Parsons right at the back there tag each other. Don Whittington bounces off. Both of them carried on, but they did tend to lose the draft from these, the front runners. A resurgent Neil Bonnet, number 21, stays out in front. 
into second moves the national champion from one year ago, Dale Earnhardt. Let's go to Brock Yates on pit road. Ken, I'm here with Leonard Wood, the crew chief on the Wood Brothers car, Neil Bonnet's number 21. Leonard, everyone seems surprised that Neil is running this strong early in the race. It was our understanding that Bobby Allison was going to try to break the draft, run alone in the early laps, but he's been unable to get away from Neil. Are you pleased? Yes, I am. Uh, we figured that we could uh, stay with him in the draft. You know, we felt our car was handling pretty well, you know. Uh, maybe a little bit better than some of the cars. But uh, I believe you'll see as the race goes along that the track will get a little bit more slippery. And a lot of the guys will begin not handling as well towards the end. So we'll have to wait about 102 miles and see what happens then. Okay, thank you, Leonard. A very patient team, as you know, Ken, so they'll be here at the end. I'll guarantee that. One of the true gentlemen of motorsport, Leonard Wood. Now, the tough customer himself, Dale Earnhardt, national champion, is out in front in car number two. And watch for him to skedaddle in the Rod Osterlund car out of California, that team, prepared by Roland Melodica. Once again, you're with Labonte, and you are trailing Ricky Rudd. That is Ricky Rudd, and you can see some smoke. Darrell Waltrip. Our other He's following Waltrip. Darrell Waltrip. Down that back straight, goes down to the inside, thinks about having a go by, but decides not to this lap. But you can see that smoke, and he pulls right down below Darrell. Can't quite make it. You can see the vibration as they come down the short 1,600 foot straight away into the trioval, just underneath our competing position. There we have a look at the And notice that itself. camera making that move. That's the uniqueness of our new CBS camera. You are looking at the windshield. This camera has the ability to move inside the car. You're watching the driver fighting his way into the corner, moving up again on Darrell Waltrip and taking another shot at him. You can see how Labonte likes to stay just a bit low on Darrell as they go through that corner. That's the safest place through these 31 degree bank corners. Bobby Allison moving on the underside of number two, Earnhardt and going after number 21. Neil Bonnet another time. Buddy Arrington, number 67, is out of the race. Arrington has gone to the garage area, number 67. Boy, those in-car pictures really bring it back to you. That's fantastic. Running in ninth position continues to be Parsons. In 10th is A.J. Foyt. A little further back, has been in 11th. Woodington in the 12th position. And Jeff Bodine in a car out of the state of Maine, the their car, is running in the 13th position. That's number 25, Ronnie Thomas of Christiansburg, Virginia, on pit road. Leaving. Bonnet, number 21 first, Allison riding second. The speed in the first 10 laps was a very slow 188.285 miles per hour. The record, Buddy Baker in car 28 a year ago at 193.548. Oh, we have trouble. A car has bounced off the wall, losing the front end, the tire coming off the machine. And that is Blackie Wengeren from Bloomington, Minnesota. Caution is out for the first time today. Wengeren has lost the right front tire. It's lying up here near the track in the tri-oval and Wengeren has crashed again. He hasn't had much success here, David. No, um, I think that these cars, these modern, these more twitchy cars, definitely put drivers like Blackie Wengeren in that class. It's really is very difficult for guys like to drive on these super speedways where you're obliged to start lapping at 190 miles an hour. And I think it's really just too much for them. Maybe they should restrict their activities to some of the shorter tracks. Blackie Wengeren. Bringing out the first caution. It's coming in lap 19. First caution of the day, and we should see Bobby Allison pit right here. Well, of course, the trouble with this race is so boring because they're only averaging 188. I, just, I, know. I just don't know why we're even bothering with it. I mean, it's so slow. Here is car number 21. Bonnet followed by Allison on pit road. Baker, Earnhardt, let's go to Brock Yates. We're down. We're down here in the Bobby Allison pit with the Rainier crew. They're going after all four tires. That's a routine thing in these early pit stops. They'll make a four tire change, make sure that their tire wear is good. The car appears to be running very nicely. Uh, I talked earlier to Waddell Wilson, the crew chief. He just gave me a thumbs up. He's sitting with the leaders. He apparently doesn't have the power to clearly break away from the field, which may be a bit of a surprise, but it's very early in the race. They don't seem to be making any chassis 
changes or adjustments. Cars down off to Jackson underway. A good quick stop for Bobby Allison. Almost, almost getting center almost. punched by Cecil Gordon as they yeah. came out, number 24. That's a... Uh... I expect Bobby Allison and his whole crew, Harry Rainier, the owner, and Waddell Wilson, their engine man. Something's happened on car 11, and they may have dropped the jack on number 11 on pit road. They have problems on car number 11. The machine is down. They've obviously not left, left off the left front wheel because you can see that corner's down. Now they'll have a heck of a job to get the jack under it to lift it up again. You seldom see a Junior Johnson crew make that kind of error, but apparently something has happened to miss on pit road for number 11 today. Well, Waltrip we with such high hopes for this one after winning how many thousands of dollars here before the race began? I think you won a cool $87,000 before this race started. He's trying to beat the pace car, or he's going to go a lap down. You see him pulling out, and the pace car is coming just out of the trioval. He beat the pace car to Ned Jarrett. We're standing with Blackie Wanger and who just hit the wall. Blackie, what happened? Some runner to the right side broke. Gave you quite a ride there. Yeah, uh, yeah, real thrill. Blackie, this track hasn't been too kind to you in the past. No, I had a bad luck last year and again this year, but we'll be back. How are the cars handling out there today in this wind? Mine was handling real good. Did any of the other cars look squirrely that you were running around? The Oldsmobiles and the Buicks are real squirrely. I took it easy to start when I was just going to start picking up the pace when it broke. And Ken, when we say squarely, that means the cars are moving around quite a bit on the racetrack. I'll say they're moving around. They look like a Saturday night square dance out there as they frolic about at 190 miles per hour. Wait. 22 laps, 55 miles complete, 178 laps remaining in our live coverage of the Daytona 500 at car number 11. The Darrow Waltrip car is back on pit road. They're making all kinds of adjustments on the machine down there. There's a man inside the car working. Let's go to Brock Yates. Uh, Ken, they've had a serious set of problems here. They let the car go early on their pit stop just a couple of laps ago because they had loosened the lug nuts on the left side. The car was dropped down off the jack. It has apparently bent the left front fender, which is the major problem. Uh, they had the hood up. I'm not sure what that was all about, but they lost a serious amount of time. The crew is concerned this is an odd error for one of the finest crews in this league. And uh, Darrell Walker's down seriously. Well, the car seems to be smoking, so that's probably what they had the hood up for. But obviously, the bent fender is not going to help them either. At 20 laps, 50 miles, Bonnet first, Allison was then in second, Baker was third, Rudd was fourth. It was Earnhardt running in the fifth position, Whittington in sixth. And there is Ricky Rudd's number 44, which is carrying our CBS camera. Or rather, I'm sorry, uh, Terry Labonte's number 44, which is carrying our camera. And now he's looking out through the back. And he must be looking at, uh, no, he's not looking at Don Whittington, we can't see. To me, like it was the car of Bobby Allison back in there. Anyway, at uh, 20 laps, 50 miles, Labonte was running an eighth behind number 11, Waltrip. The ninth position car was Parsons. Tenth was Foyt. Going 11th was Elliott. The 12th position car was number 27, Kaylee Arboro, and Richard Petty was in 13th. And there you see the average speed at 185. That's not a record. The record is 193, 548, by Buddy Baker one year ago, racing the fastest 500-mile race in history. Well, that just shows right there the tremendous difference between this year's cars and next year's cars. But this is the first race with the new downsized cars. And you can just leave it to these NASCAR crews and drivers. By the time we get halfway through this season, they'll have got over their problems, and we'll be right back to speed. Stan Barrett in the pits in the Burt Reynolds Hal Needham car making its first appearance here. Stan Barrett, well-known Hollywood stuntman who ran four races last year, never finished worse than 13th. As you can see, that yellow line on the bottom of his car denotes he's a rookie, so that when you're a Bobby Allison coming up to overtake someone, uh, it gives you a clue as to what their skills are. But uh, young uh, Stanley Barrett, who's done 700 odd miles an hour on ground, now cruising around a miserable 185. Right. How 739 boring. miles an hour over the face of the oh, earth in the Lord. Needham rocket car. Wanted to take a stab at stock car racing, and Burt Reynolds and Hal Needham put this team together. Needham is here today, observing, probably as nervous as Stanley is. I think he's going to jump off the grandstand roof later on. <laughs> 
Field in the back straight away. We are working in the 24th lap. We are in lap 24 as they come around, and they should be taking green when they come by. We understand there's another problem on the wall trip, car number 11, to Brock Yates. Ken, I'm with Junior Johnson in the Darrell Waltrip pit. Junior is now talking with Darrell over the radio. I'm not sure what he's talking about. We'll get to him as quickly as he stops his communication. Darrell is apparently telling him some more problems out there. They certainly had a handful already early in this race, and uh, who's to know what else is to come for them? On the he's, restart, he's going to one of the craftiest belongs. men in this business. As you know, Ricky Rudd in first. Monte is in second. Terry Labonte running in second. Ricky Rudd on the point as they go down. Harry Gant running in third. Whittington is in fourth, but Baker is breaking upside, trying to move through. So our camera car now lying in second spot as they go round turn two to come down onto the back straight. Following Ricky Rudd, one of the youngest men in this race. He's only 24 years old, rookie of the year in 1977. And uh, with a new strong team, the Digard team, which uh, Darrell Walton left last year, this could be Ricky Rudd's best year yet. In fact, it Number better 44. be his best year yet. Terry Lavani of Corpus Christi, Texas. His dad got him started in racing. Let's go to Brock Yates. Ken, I'm with Junior Johnson. He can talk now. Junior, have you got your problems sorted out now? Well, we got just a little bit of an oil leak somewhere now that's dropped on the dog pipe. It's smoking a little bit, but it ain't leaking out for the car, so it's just a seat somewhere now. Uh, we don't think it's no major problem with it. Okay, thank you. Believe it or not, Ken, it's so loud down here, I couldn't hear a word he said, but I presume you know what he's talking about. Back to you. They think they can get along with the problem. But right now, problems for Ricky Rudd is Terry Labonte in car number 44 moves in on his rear bumper. And back into third spot goes car number 28. This is going to give us some sort of clue as to just how fast Bobby Allison's car really is, because he was back in sixth, and he's already up to third, and it just depends how quick he can cover that gap. Kelly Arbor away in the back of that flock as they come around to complete the 27th lap. Yarborough is running about 13th in that field. He'll have some going to do the 1968-77 champion. And there you get a feeling for the tremendous speed these 3,700-pound racing cars are dealing with. Back they go in the back straightaway. Terry Labonte drafting right behind Ricky Rudd as they go into turn three. You have Earlier, we talked to Kelly Arborough in 27, as he has his work cut out for him, starting back in 29th position. Prior to the start of today's race, he talked about the frustration so far back. I feel like I should be there, but I can't get there. You know, I'll say again, maybe things will work better during the race, but uh, it's, uh, it's kind of disappointing to, to have to sit back. Uh, you don't like to sit there. You like to be up front. And of course, if things work good, that's where we'll go if at all possible. Well, there you see number 27 going down out of the back second turn into the back straightaway. He is running in 12th position and attacking Benny Parsons for the 11th. Meanwhile, in front, there goes Bobby Allison down beneath Terry Labonte. He pulls up on 88 and takes a shot at him. Bobby Allison going back for the front position another time. Well, that must be pretty discouraging, actually, for the others because he really caught up very fast. He's not by. But you'll notice that he can run well, very low. Everybody else is having to take the high line around here. Bobby Allison seems to be able to put that car where he wants. And Benny Parsons is drawn into the pits. Number 15, the Bud Moore car, which won here for Bobby Allison, is now on pit road. And uh, the Whittington car is on pit road. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Ken, one of the cars that started way back there with Cale Yarborough was Harry Gant, and before the caution, he was one of the fastest cars on the track. He's now in that battle for the fifth position out there. Bob Johnson, the crew chief on the car, is standing by. Bob, you must be pleased with the way that car was running out there. Yeah, we're real happy today. We had a share of problems at the beginning of the week. Harry just said it was a little loose before this yellow, and I guess I tightened it a little too much, but we can straighten it out, I hope. Is he saying that it's too tight now? Yeah, a little bit. Drafting Ken and Harry Gant has become a master at that technique. A broken windshield on car number 93, Don Whittington. Put him on 
Washington Road, and he's just coming back on the track now. Whittington out of Florida as we work the 30th of 200 laps. And they're also reporting a windshield on car one is beginning to break. Buddy Baker has a hole in his windshield on car number one. That will certainly disturb the aerodynamics on the Haas Ellington car. Certainly disturb the aerodynamics around your helmet, too. It's not very pleasant to have a broken windscreen. That's a shame for Don Whittington, who was putting on a pretty good show there for a, a relative rookie for this extremely dodgy drafting procedure. There's Buddy Baker, car number one, being closely followed by Richard Petty, 43. A car that we all know pretty well by now. Buddy Baker is running six. The lead car draft picking up to a... I like a nine and ten car draft. Dale Earnhardt just training behind Richard. Maddie there, we have catching a, up on him. We have another broken windshield. Number 17, Glenn Jarrett's windshield is broken. Once again, you're with Terry Lamonti in car number 44. He is running in fourth position. There he is, right up there, the leaders waving. See the sign that says, Hi, Justin? That's for his one week old son who is back in Texas watching this race today. You can put all sorts of messages on there, can you? <laughs> Please send help, refreshments or anything else. You can see his rev counter there, glued at just over between 7,000 and 8,000 RPM. 8,000 being the last figure there, and it's running at about, what, 7,600 RPM. And our camera can zoom right in on him. How's that for a 190 mile per hour ride? And you can see that as he goes into that corner, he loses about 500 RPM. Now, that's not because he's lifting off. That's just tire scrub as these cars go into the turn. Well, you're right there with the leader, number 44, Terry Labonte, who's running with the leaders in fourth place. And now we're looking out the back. Whoa, look at that man right up on That's him. That's Buddy was... Baker right behind him, and right behind him is Richard Petty. He pulls away a bit as he goes into turn four. Now let's see if uh, Buddy can catch him up in the draft. They go down onto the trio. Oh, sorry, the back straight. Here's Baker pulling up. Baker right up on the rear bumper. And you can see the hole in Baker's windshield. A little break up here for just a moment. Back with the leaders, Bobby Allison, 28, still has command. Bonnet is in the second position. There's the number one car that's having a problem in our camera car, number 44, right in front of him. Number 47, Gant is back on pit road. Bobby Allison in front. There's Gant. He is a tremendous driver, cut his teeth in the modified ranks of NASCAR, and that Race Hill Farms car from Connecticut, doing proud for a while, but now having problems. We will continue with more live coverage of the Daytona 500 after this word from your local station. Four laps are complete in the 23rd Daytona 500, 85 miles down, 415 to go. Harry Gant pitted, came back on the track. He is pitting again under green as the folks in the grandstand. Looks like a tennis match watching these guys go by at 190 miles per hour. There's a little more at stake than a ball so forth than this one. Nearly as much money, too. Almost. At least they're willing to race the consolation. On the back straightaway, in the front running position is Bobby Allison. In second is Neil Bonnet, maintaining the third in a very stout draft. Here comes Bonnet to the inside. Parsons in third. Tremendous race for the lead going into turn number three. Almost side by side. Bonnet then had to fall back. Well, Bonnet that... made a real stab at the lead there. Well, there we see the two good Fords out here. Neil Bonnet, number 21, and Benny Parsons, number 15. But unfortunately, Benny is a lap down, but he's right in there with his lead car draft, so what he needs now is to get right to the front, have a yellow flag situation, cross the line first, and that'll give him his lap back. Terry Labonte with Baker right on his rear bumper. Now Baker's pulling up and trying to pass. You're riding with Terry Labonte, and Baker is right there trying to storm through. There you see Richard Petty right behind Baker, now going to the outside. There you see the hole in Buddy Baker's windscreen, right up to the back of Terry Labonte, down the inside. He's pulling alongside. He's shooting through to go by. Up in front. So Buddy Baker takes... Bonnet has taken the lead. So Buddy takes fourth spot away from Labonte. Let's go to Harry Gantz pits. 
Harry Gant has been in the pits, Ken, for more than a lap now. He has ignition problems on his car number 47. He was one of the fastest cars out there charging to the front. The crew said all of a sudden it started misfiring. They brought him in. He went back out, only made a lap, and now they're changing distributors on the car. So he's losing a lot of valuable time here. I can't imagine what it must be like to be in a race and lose time. It must be very frustrating. The old lap charters keeping very careful track as Bonnet puts the board back in front. The Pontiac continues to run in second place. Ricky Rudd in car number 88, maintaining the third position, running with an Oldsmobile. And now Benny Carson's, as you see, a lap car. Appears in third, but he is a lap down, and the report is that number one, eight, one keeps swapping. Number one, Buddy Baker's lying in fourth at the moment, closely followed by our man, Labonte, number 44. Now it looks like Darrell Walchuk slipped into that position. There are ten cars gathered up in the lead draft. Walchuk must be a lap down. Coming up on the 40 lap mark in a lap and a half. Back straight away, and here comes another pass for the lead. Back goes Bobby Allison, the 1978 Daytona 500 champion in front of Neil Bonnet. Unrelenting, Allison surges back in front. After 44 laps have been completed, 110 miles, we have had 15 lead changes. That's better than half of what we saw the entire race last year. There were 29 lead changes in the entire 500 a year ago. Already there have been 15 in this race. We're just a little over 100 miles. Billy Harvey, number 31, is pulling on pit road, throwing some smoke. Also on pit road, Harry Gant another time. Not a good day for the Beatty Johnson combination, the Race Hill Farms car, and there is Harvey coming in with some problems. Uh, it's a great shame because Harry Gant rode a very good, uh, qualified well, drove a very good qualifying race, and was running very strongly in the early going today. And, uh, well, that's effectively good amount. Even if they get back now, he must have lost four or five laps. At 40 laps, 100 miles, the speed was 164.760, way off the record of 180.180 that was established a year ago by Buddy Baker. This is naturally has been created by the caution condition on the track. Let's go back to Terry Labonte's car as he continues, and Richard Petty, it's like he's moved around him in their struggle. That would put Petty into six. And watching him down the back stretch, Richard Petty has just pulled in front of him, number 43, he's just, and there's Labonte, and here's a car pulling up on the inside of him. That's Kaylee Yarborough shooting down and getting around Terry Labonte. There he is in the upper right of your picture. That's Kaylee Yarborough down the inside. Looked like the car was leaning all yeah. the way over on the right. You can see that flurry of activity on Labonte's arms, too when uh, Yabra went by. Definitely upset the car. Unfortunately, you're seeing a disappointed Labonte coming into the pits. Labonte is pitting. You're with him as he comes on pit road. Let's check and see if this is an unscheduled stop. And he's going behind the wall. Terry Labonte has had trouble in car number 44. He's been running with the leaders. Oh, and his trouble in car number 23 has spun off up at turn number four, up by the tunnel. Car number 23 out of control at turn four. Jeff Bodine's automobile has finally come to rest. Caution is on the track. I think he probably spun on the Bonte's oil, but he went right into, it seemed like he went right into the crowd somehow. I didn't even know you, how he could get down there. Well, those are safety personnel, and we have a replay. We can see exactly what happened. Apparently, there was oil on the track in turn four. Let's look and see if we can discover what happened here. And there in the top of the picture, you saw some smoke coming off the wheels of car number 23, the Bear car of Bob and Richard Bear from Oxford, Maine, and the car sliding, coming up across the top of the tunnel. People darting, getting out of the way. There's those are press photographers up there and safety personnel. I have never in all my years coming to Daytona seen a car take such an incredible course. Let's obviously hope that no one was uh, injured by the car. Well, there, there is Jeff Bodine now 
residing in Pleasant Gardens, North Carolina. His dad ran a speedway up in Upper New York State for many years. He's been trying to break onto the Grand National Tour. They came down here and qualified very well. A second ambulance has pulled up and we're waiting for a report and all the leaders are pitting. We're trying to get a report for you on Terry Labonte. It looks like he just had an engine hand grenade on him up there in turn number four. May have laid some oil down, which 23 then got into and you saw the results. Yeah, here's a pit stop. It is under caution. So they won't be working with quite the pressure as they would under green, but it will give you a fair idea. Two tire change, now four tires. They're going all the way around on Bobby Allison's Pontiac. When they change the tires like this, Ken, of course, the, really, the reason they do it is the new tires are always just a little bit quicker. They don't have to do it because they're worn out. Uh, they don't wear out that quickly, but they do definitely go better. And they're having trouble getting out. There's just not room for it to come out. Pulls around, Neil Bonnet. Almost had an accident there in the parking lot. Well, there we see the two strongest cars here going out together. And young Stan Barrett was zipping by there in car number 22. Stan Barrett in his first Daytona 500, driving for his new team. Travis Carter is the crew chief. Remember the years that Travis worked with the Junior Johnson people, hoping to put a team together that will really be stout out here in time to come. More on this accident and on Labonte in a moment. Two laps, 130 miles have been completed in the 23rd Daytona 500. Caution came out. It appears that Terry Labonte blew an engine, and car number 23 went into the oil, spun, and did a most unusual thing. It, it went off where we've never seen before. David Hobbs. I can't believe it. It was coming around turn four. It must have hit the oil, spun down onto the infield, which is the normal course of events. And then, unfortunately, the car just seems to take right over climbs the uh, safety bank um, like a off-road car and just disappears into that crowd of photographers and officials. People diving out of the way, the car going over the bank and right up against the wall. Now those are press photographers and safety personnel who were there. We're still waiting for a further report. The initial report is that Bodine is all right. We're waiting to know if there is anything else that of consequence that has happened in this incident at turn four. Some of the folks checking their program here, as indeed they need to with all these driver changes this year among the top competitors, under caution for the second time. It's really relatively simple as far as these driver changes. Rudd replaces Waltrip, who replaces Yarborough, who replaces Parsons, who replaces Allison, who replaces Baker, who replaces Pearson, who replaces Chuck Bound, who is still home looking for a ride. Simple. <laughs> I can't imagine what all the fuss is about. But that was the most freaky accident I've ever seen here. And he just disappeared more or less into the tunnel, uh, which is the infield entry exit. We've got one lap to go under the yellow. The pace car light will go out on this time round. Earnhardt is in front. The Stan Barrett car is behind it. That is a lapped car. And the second place car would be Allison. The third place car on the field is 21 Bonnet. Then the fourth place car would be Richard Petty. Fifth place would be Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd, of course, is one of the driver changes we just mentioned. He's driving Darrell's old 88. Six is Kaylee Arborough, and running seventh on the field was Buddy Baker. Getting set for a start. We have completed 53 of the 200 laps. 132 and a half miles are down. Windshields have been an issue today. We had a hole in the windshield of Buddy Baker's car. They black flagged Glenn Jarrett with a cracked windshield. The Whittingtons had a windshield go down on them, as did Ronnie Thomas and Dave Marcus's number 71 also had a windshield problem. So that seems to be shades of what, 1964? 66 when they had windshield problems here. It's pretty unusual because NASCAR make a tremendous effort to make sure the track is clean and safe after any incidents and they like to keep it very clean. We have a report that no one was injured in the incident with the bear number 23 being driven by Jeff Bodine. The car being towed back but the driver and the working press up there are all all right as well as the safety personnel and that is good news. 
Well, it's always good news when no one's hurt in one of these racing crashes. And that's another thing about NASCAR. It is very safe. And here we see the cars coming around three and four on their way to take the green. There you see the Burt Reynolds Hal Needham car on the inside, lapped automobile, Stan Barrett. And on the outside is car number two. Stanley has been with us as a commentator several times on CBS. Very nervous this morning. <laughs> his Very adrenaline, concerned. His adrenaline will be flowing now. He's at the lead, right at the lead of that field. Look at what's lined up behind him. As they come down to start, first position car is Earnhardt. Second is Bob Brown. Third lot is Fort Fifth is Brad. Then comes Kaylee Armorough, followed by Buddy Baker. And the field assembles in turn number one for some high speed racing. Yarbrough pulling himself up now from that very lowly starting spot. But never a man to discount in this Daytona 500. And surprise, surprise, look who's at the front of that lead draft. Look at that water on the inside of the back straightaway. Maybe he slides off in here. It rained all night hard. It rained yesterday and canceled the Sportsman 300. It was not run. It rained all day. So if they get off the track, they're really in the soup here today. A complete lap 55. In car number 21, Neil Bonnet. Hot on the trail of Bobby Allison. That is exactly where he wants to be. Before the start of the race, we asked Neil about his early race strategy. It looks like it's going to be a strategy to hook on the back of that back end of that little black and silver car of Bobby's. Uh, his car is just running so good. and. Uh, I could draft with him the other day. It was a pretty good handful, but it looks like Bobby's going to be the guy that's really going to be Side by side, Neil Bonnet and his teacher, Bobby Allison, out Bonnet out in front as he scoots through the third and fourth turn. Earnhardt drops third. Going back to the third spot as they come back to the line, it's Dale Earnhardt in the fourth position. Ricky Rudd, the lap car of Benny Parsons in between. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. The CBS camera is out of it. Terry, what went wrong with your car number 44? Ned, uh, the car developed a vibration about 10 laps before uh, whatever broke, broke. And, uh, you know, I really don't know what happened to it. I believe it was something in the engine. You were giving us some great pictures out there. We're sorry to see you out of it. I'm, so, I'm sorry to see myself out, too. Well, I know you are, but you are okay. Yeah. Well, and a fellow that was a victim of that when he dropped the oil was Jeff Bodine. Jeff, uh, did you hit the oil? Well, I Number guess seven, so, Bruce Hill has crashed. Behind Darryl and, uh, Number seven, Topeka, sideways. Kansas, Bruce Hill has and crashed. The, the car is resting against the wall. We have another caution. Well, he's resting against the wall when I wouldn't want. I hope they've raced back to the flag, yeah, because that's a tricky situation in NASCAR racing, and they'll see him park there against the wall on the exit of turn two. Lap number 55, just before the caution came out, was run at an average speed of 190.275. That was 190.275. We just had a flag for the third caution of the day as Bruce Hill in trouble. Car resting just as they exit turn number two. We'll get back to Ned Jarrett with Jeff Bodine in just a moment. Try to see what happened here. He's already in the wall. Looks like he just danced up into the thing. Well, the cost it, and he's doing the correct thing. Once you're in that wall in NASCAR racing, you've absolutely got to stay there because the worst thing you can do, come away from the wall, get side onto the traffic, and get T-boned. Uh, waiting for some assistance here. Bruce Hill, former Rookie of the Year, and let's go back to Ned Jarrett. One of the hottest modified drivers in the country is Jeff Bodine, and he was a victim of the engine that blew on Terry Labonte's car. Jeff, describe what happened. Well, we went. In. I was following Daryl, and uh, he was smoking a little bit. I, that concerned me. I was afraid he might blow up. But I never saw Terry blow the engine, and I went in the corner a little low, and the car just went sideways. I got it down, kept it off the wall. I got it down in the grass, and from there it just drove itself. You know, you get in the grass, you can't drive these cars. And uh, fortunately, we didn't run into anybody or anything else. You just sit there and sort of hang on. Well, it was a wild ride. I came up over the bank by the tunnel, and. Uh, there's some people standing there. That looked pretty bad for a while, but they all got out of the way. Jeff, how was the car handling? There'd been so much talk all week long about these cars. We were handling well. We were down on horsepower. We changed the engines from the 125, and it just didn't have the horsepower. And I couldn't stay in that lead draft, but the car was handling well. Ken, here's a fellow that wants to do this so badly and get to the top. He's made it to the top in the short track division, and now he wants to do it in this tough Grand National division. Jeff Bodine. 
car built by Tom Pistone that uh, looked very, very strong. He came out here today having trouble. We are back live with you at Daytona. Again, that happened on Thursday, that crash of John Anderson. He is all right. He's up here watching yesterday, or hopefully watching a race that was washed out. And with two laps down, back on the green, we are at the 61st lap. There's Don Whittington, number 93, trying to make up a lap and get back in the lead lap. The Florida driver, Bobby Allison in front, Dale Earnhardt in second, Ricky Rudd in third, Buddy Baker is maintaining fourth, Richard Petty is showing in the fifth position as they come by. In the sixth position is Kaylee Arborough, in seventh is David Pearson, running eighth is Ricky Rudd. Well, now watch out for fireworks now. We got Don Whittington leading this lead car draft. Bobby Allison's heart, no doubt, right in his mouth. Don Whittington's already a lap down. The only reason to lap down is because the windscreen broke, and we've got a report that car number 71, that's Dave Marcus, and 24, Cecil Gordon, also have broken windshields, but they're not severe enough to uh, take them off the track. Bill Elliott is running in ninth as you look at the front of the field, and running in tenth is Donnie Allison with A.J. Foyt maintaining 11th. In the 12th position is Jody Ridley. Going 13th on the field is Lenny Pond. 14th overall is Johnny Rutherford. And 15th is currently number 75, Joe Milliken. The 16th car is an error on this rundown. They're reporting that, and that, that may be correct, Neil Bonnet back that far after that restart. Bonnet back to 16th with the 17th position as Bonnet pitted and came in on the tail end of the lead lap. The 17th position is car number 41, Richard Brooks, with the 18th position, Elliot Forbes Robinson. And Jeff Bodine is coming back on the track. The car that spun off in turn number four, Bodine, number 23, once again is on the racetrack. Jeff Bodine in a Pontiac, trying to get back in this thing, coming up to speed. He lost a couple of laps there while he had a lunch break down with the marshals at the tunnel entrance. 64 laps, now complete. Speed very slow, 151.388 miles per hour. The record at this juncture is Richard Petty's at 179 miles an hour. Taking a look at the attrition, Blackie Wengren crashing in lap 19. Cecil Gordon is out. Terry Labonte has lost an engine. He has retired from the event. Those are the three first official retirees, leaving 39 cars still in action as we get to lap 65 when they motor by this time. Second, Dale Earnhardt, winner of the national championship last year. Explosive driver out of Annapolis, North Carolina. Just amazed everyone one year ago on the NASCAR Grand National Tour. Rookie of the year the year before, and then the first time a rookie has gone straight to the national championship. And also a record amount of money, $588,000 winning last year. Cecil Gordon has just come back on the track. It had been reported that he had retired from the event. Cecil Gordon has now brought his number 24 yellow and blue car back on the racetrack. Here's Allison, completing his 67th lap. Bobby Allison first came here in 1961 to race at Daytona. He won his first Grand National race in the state of Maine back in 1966 and went on to two other victories at Islip, Long Island and Beltsville, Maryland that year. And a little old Chevy number two, which made a lot of history because at that time, Chevrolet hadn't been winning many races. But Allison turned that around and now has won himself 61 Grand National races. Keeping track of those times per lap as they come by. Last lap was 190.799 miles per hour on the lead car, Bobby Allison in number 28. So they, from the grandstands, from the $55 seats, my friends. Third spot, Baker. Fourth spot, Ricky Rudd. Fifth spot, Petty. Petty running very well here. Remember, he was injured a year ago, that number 43. Neil Bonnet moves in on number 27. 
Bonnet moving all the way up quickly through traffic is now challenging back in the seventh position. Taking on Cale Yabra and That's drafting a... down the inside and probably going to have a go at Richard too as they go into turn three. Made a heck of a run. He's passed eight automobiles and he's pulling himself up to take a shot at Richard Petty. That Ford is really working today. So in the just sliding back into traffic. Looks back into the draft. Allison first. Earnhardt second. Ricky Rudd third and all the way up to fourth and still challenging. Here comes 21, Neil Monnet. Boy, he'll have this Ford crowd on their feet. There's Baker riding in the third with his Oldsmobile. Pontiac out in front. Earnhardt rides in second. There's Baker going down to the inside to challenge for the lead. And here comes Bonnet. He was all the way back. He's being shown in the 16th position about five laps ago. And he's thundered right back up with the leaders. Tremendous judgment calls are required when you pull back into that draft like he, we saw him do on the lap before. When they pull out like he is now, down low, then he slips back in like that. You've got to really make sure that the gap is there. One car pitting soon for him come in. There is Kaylee Arbro getting under Earnhardt in the 27 as they go back in that 1600 foot straightaway. Down to turn number one. Jeff Bodine on pit road. Jeff Bodine back in change of right side tires on that machine. Meanwhile, the leader's going down the back straightaway. And here's a battle for the lead another time. Buddy Baker is on the inside. Oldsmobile against Pontiac. Ford comes down the inside. All the makes looking good out here thus far in the going. Cars very skitterish, but the driver's doing magnificently. Kale Yara underneath uh, Buddy, uh, Bobby Allison there as well. But he's going to have to slip back into that draft, or he could drop back about six places. Laps complete. Baker going in front. Now Bonnet comes back up for the lead. Allison riding in third. Earnhardt back to fourth. Kaylee Arborough fifth. Ricky Rudd in the sixth position. Following Ricky Rudd, David Pearson holds on to seventh. Petty has slipped back into eighth. Position is Elliott and up to 10th comes A.J. Foyt. He's picked up one. There's Waltrip running a lap down on the field. He's had some problems out here today. The latest report showed him back in the lead lap. He probably got back in the lead lap on that last shuffle in the pitch on the last portion play. Darrell Waltrip has made up the deficit of one lap and is being shown running now with the leaders. Devastating lead draft group. You'll notice that today there's very little side-by-side -side motoring as they go around turns one and two. They draft each other down this back straight into that strong headwind, make a slingshot going into three, and they're prepared to go around three and four side-by-side. -side. They are in the lead of the win. Once again, Bobby Allison goes down the inside and zips into first place in the 72nd lap of the Daytona 500. 73 laps, there you see the standings. We are now at 75 laps, 187 and a half miles. Let me go a little further back in the standings for you. Running 11th right now is Jody Ridley, 12th is Lenny Pond, 13th is Donnie Allison. Going in the 14th, Richard Brooks doing very well out here today. Elliot Forbes Robinson is running 15th, and going 16th is Johnny Rutherford. A.J. Foyt is in 10th, and here's A.J. getting by the left car. The Bud Moore car, number 15, being driven by Benny Parsons. The last lap by the leader, number 28, Bobby Allison, at an average speed of 189.155 miles per hour. And here come your leaders at just under 190, and they're fighting 40-mile-an-hour headwinds down the back straightaway. You can see how stiffly the flags are blowing today. A lot of starch in them from the wind, and it has canceled out our Goodyear blimp shots, which we've always had in the past. The Goodyear blimp has been grounded by the turbulent weather that we have above us, as well as off the banking on the speedway. And there's a cool 13 cars in that lead draft at the moment, currently led by Neil Bonnet, closely followed by Bobby Allison, who takes another stab at him at the end of that back straight. Neil Bonnet seeking his eighth Grand National victory, would be his first Daytona 500 win. 
And as we mentioned earlier, it will be the fifth time that the Wood Brothers have taken that beautiful maroon, white, and gold livery of Paul Cameron into Victory Lane here at the Daytona Speedway. Let's follow them around 360 degrees. This will make you hold your breath. There they go down that 3,500 foot back shoot. There goes Allison up on the inside. Allison back in front as they hit turn three. Donnie Allison in the pits. Car number 12 on pit road and continuing to follow around 360 degrees. Here they are down that grandstand out of turn number four helping them with a win. Here they are into the tri-oval. Now they bear down on the fastest part of the track, the wind directly at their tail and just pushing them down into turn number one. Probably doing over 200 miles an hour at that point as they go into turn one. Then how do they slow down if they're running wide open here? They don't slow down. But the average speed, 180 well, miles an hour. Unfortunately, going down this straight that we see them coming onto now, the back straight, they'll be pushed down to about 195. And of course, they lose speed in the corners, even if they don't actually lift off. The G-forces just load up on these cars. There's so much weight from the G-force that they lose a lot of speed in the banking. Tremendous amount of tire scrub, and it just and it wears off speed, as we saw from our inch camera picture earlier. The Monty losing about 500 RPM, which with the gear they have is a lot of miles an hour. Executing very well out here today for the kind of conditions they have to run with and the squirrely cars, these narrower, shorter machines. They're driving well, but look at this field stay together. Keep the pressure on. Well, of course, that's what they're doing. They're staying together. We're not seeing anything like as much side-by-side -side driving as we're used to. And these guys are just making sure they're hanging in there in that draft. There's no point in knocking your brains out at this stage in the race. It's the last 10 laps that count. Well, it's the last lap that counts. The leader, Bobby Allison, in lap traffic and just one car length adrift in second place, Neil Bonnet. <laughs> really windy out here today. Here they are, back to the tri-oval. And look at this, a Kimball of automobiles back into turn number one bunch of lap traffic there, this incredibly high speed line of drivers going around the outside of the slower car just as when everybody's holding their breath. Bobby Allison first, Bonnet in second, Baker is third, Earnhardt is fourth, Donnie Allison is back in the pits. In the fifth spot, Ricky Rudd, six is Kaylee Arboro, brother David Pearson. Then comes Richard Petty. Darrell Waltrip on to the next position back as they come off the banking. We have an 11 car draft for the lead. Back to the line. Allison first. Bonnet in second. Baker right there in third. Still in the fourth position. What a shootout. This could be at the finish. Dale Earnhardt holding on to fourth. Riding in fifth is Kaylee Arborough. Ricky Rudd is sixth. Richard Petty is in seventh. David Pearson, I think, is in eighth. And following pretty closely behind David Pearson is Dariel Waltrip, followed very closely by A.J. Foyt, number 51. Waltrip's car is still smoking. Tenth place is A.J. Eleventh place, Elliot. Twelfth place, Jody Ridley. 13th, Lenny Pond. 14th, Elliot Forbes Robinson. 15th, Richard Brooks. Change of lead another time. Allison going back in front. Still 21 cars in the lead lap. Elliot Forbes Robinson, number 86, lying there in 14th spot. We'll be pretty happy with that so far. He was the highest rookie scorer at Riverside three weeks ago. And here we see another shot from the spectator eye view, right there in the grandstand. Joe Milliken is running in 16th position with his number 75 for his fans around the country. Car number 17, pulling on pit road. This is the Roger Hamby owned car, which Glenn Jarrett, the son of Ned Jarrett, is driving today. A rookie here at the Daytona 500, a Buick automobile number 17. 
here we see the leaders once again down the back straightaway. Neil Bonnet, briefly out in front. We mean briefly, Buddy Baker surges back into first place still another time as the lead seesaws in the 23rd run into the Daytona 500. Baker, last year's champion of the 500, is back in first place. Neil Bonnet in second, Bobby Allison in third. Waltrip being shown in the, has dropped out of the sixth for that report. They continue to swap these positions, seesaw from one lap to the next. Let me give you the 100 lap, 250 mile halfway rundown. They were averaging 156.631 miles per hour. Nowhere near the record of 173.5111 by Buddy Baker a year ago. A report on Waltrip's car. Let's go to Ned Jarrett quickly. Ken, you mentioned you had a report with sparks coming from the car. I talked with Junior Johnson, the owner of the car. He says what is happening, that they're running such a soft setup, and that is softer springs than normal here at Daytona in order to stabilize the cars, that when it hits some bumps occasionally, that the exhaust pipe would actually hit the pavement. But he says it's not bothering anything and everything's okay. At 250 miles, the official rundown at halfway was then Earnhardt first, Allison then second, Petty then third. With the fourth position overall, Baker. The fifth position was Elliott. The sixth position on the field was Waltrip. Seventh was Rudd. Eighth at halfway was Jody Ridley. Ninth was David Pearson. Tenth was Elliott Forbes Robinson. Eleventh was Joe Milliken. Twelfth was Richard Childress. And thirteenth on the field was number 42, Kyle Petty. In the 14th position, a lap down was car number 27. And that's the car you saw spinning, Cale Yarborough. The 15th position, also a lap down, Benny Parsons. The 16th position, a lap down, and being put a lap down, this was A.J. Foyt. The 17th position rests with Lenny Pond. The 18th position, Dick Brooks. 19th on the field, Bill Ellswick. Going 20th, Stan Barrett. The 21st position belonging to Johnny Rutherford, two laps down in 22nd position, number 12, Donnie Allison. Then in 23rd was car number 93, Don Whittington, 24th, number 99, Tim Richmond, and 25th was Dave Marcus. Another change of leadership, the Pontiac going back in front of the Ford, and it is Allison in first, Bonnet in second. And Darrell Waltrip has made a significant move up to third spot. I don't know about sparking, but his car is definitely still smoking, and he's there. Sandwich in third spot. In the Mercury, uh, the Mercury, between the Thunderbird, Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker running very strongly in that number one car. Onto the pit road comes Benny Parsons, car number 15. Two Brock Yates. Kenneth, Kenneth's the middle of a very nasty afternoon for Benny Parsons. He was expecting to do very well in this car. He stopped earlier with a soft tire. That put him a lap back. Now he's got some heating problems. They're adding water. The engine is now being shut down by crew chief Bud Moore. Benny just reached, kicked the ignition switch off. The hood's down. The race is over for Benny Parsons. coming back in front of the crowd but not all the crowd in the midst of the race and all this battle there's a few folks out there that have some other things to do today well, they want to spend a bit of money <laughs> the concession stands here do a roaring business in t-shirts and hats of all their favorite drivers Darrell Walter Richard Petty and all these people can take home these souvenirs from Dayton and there we see Benny Parsons taking home his souvenir of the day which is uh, unfortunately not as happy for him. But Moore's number 15 being rolled back, still another lead change. And Bonnet pushes that number 21 back on the point. Buddy Baker in third, Darrell Waltrip in fourth, and right behind him is Neil uh, Dale Earnhardt. In car number two. Then following him is Richard Petty in the sixth position. Right now falling to seventh. And we have uh, Jimmy Means back on pit road, the Alabama driver, bringing his car in. There's Means' car, and they have engine problems on that one. The front of the field goes up into turn number two. Bonnet in command of this race. Second place automobile. Looks like a waiting game. 
Somebody has a full house. Somebody's trying to draw to it. There's well, Allison back in front. What authority. That number 28 meanders down that back straightaway. Although we've had a lot of lead changes in this race, it's been a very restrained race in lots of ways. The lead changes may mainly been a, a result of the headwind and the drafting of these cars. A slight instability on the course. Continuing to grapple with first position as the field goes down into turn number one. Number 28, Allison still has the advantage with 111 of 200 laps now complete. And you are now in the car of Richard Childress, the number three car coming down pit road. Richard Childress's automobile as we're trying to fire up our second in-camera car. Number 28, Allison at turn two. A lot of people said when they came to Daytona, the cars to look for today, David, would be the Fords. And sure enough, that Thunderbird has stuck it out right there in the front of the draft all afternoon. Well, it has, but the other strong car all the way, of course, has been Bobby Allison. And look where he's been all the race. He and uh, Neil Bonnet seem to be the strongest cars out there. I must say, I feel a bit sorry for Bobby Allison. He came here with a very, very clear advantage. And to his chagrin, the uh, NASCAR officials really made it easier for the other cars. And I think that's why they're keeping up with him as well as they are, quite frankly. If they left it as it was when he arrived, I think he'd be long gone. With 112 laps complete, we still have 13 cars in the lead lap of the Daytona 500. We have now completed 280 miles of competition. Now there's Richard Petty, still putting on some pressure. Oh, that's Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty at number 42, and remember, he is running 13th on the field. Back there with him is car number 86, Elliott Forbes Robinson, just in front of him. Well-known sports car driver. The camera car number three is going down. Richard Childress's car being pushed backwards, and that is going to be through for Richard Childress this afternoon. Bad break for Childress, who was off to a great start this year, had run in front in much of the race at Riverside, California, the Western 500, and here today is retiring in the 113th lap. Bobby Allison stays out in front, still struggling to win his first Daytona 500, or rather his second Daytona 500 as Neil Bonnet tries to win his first. One hundred seventeen laps complete. The report is that Waltrip's having some problems with car number eleven and is slowing down. There you see the Junior Johnson car. The last few laps have been turned consistently at forty-seven point seven seconds, averaging one hundred eighty-eight point four eight two miles per hour. One of the favorites for this race is still trying to get back in, and he'll be laps down. But let's get a report right now on Benny Parsons in the garage area still in the car the bud moore crew is replacing the radiator ken benny a little unusual that you'd have a radiator what happened to it i guess uh something flew up off the racetrack went through the grill and into the radiator not the hole in boy this just hasn't been your day definitely hasn't not today benny why are you staying in the car well we're going back out so it shouldn't take more than three or four more minutes, and I'll be going back on the racetrack. Of course, they would go back out, of course, to make as many laps as they can and gain as many points as they possibly can because he will be a contender for the national championship this year. Six cars running one and six-tenths of a second apart here in the Daytona 500 for the lead. All of a sudden, popping out in the last lap, Allison is pulling away, number 28. Just flat left at number 21, Bonnet, has pitted his partner through most of the race. Neil Bonnet is now on pit road. Is this an unscheduled stop is the question here. Here's number 21 in. 11, Waltrip has gone to the garage. This must be an unscheduled stop for Bonnet. I can't imagine they've done enough laps yet to want to come in again. Not all that long since we last had a caution. Changed the right side tires, obviously filled it up with fuel. And away he goes, laying some tire smoke. Betting in those uh, rear tires. Now, Ned Jarrett said earlier that um, Benny would be a many passes was going to be a contender for the championship. He certainly will, because those Fords are running extremely well this year. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. They just pulled the car number 11 into the garage. Darrell, what went wrong? I don't know, Ned. <laughs> it blew up. <laughs> oh, so it's the engine then? Yeah, I don't know what it was. Uh, 
we just really got the car where I could drive it, where it felt pretty good. And I just started to try to go for the lead the first time all day, and something happened to it. I'm not sure what. Darrell, when you say you just got in the car to where you could drive it, were they making adjustments on it? Yeah. Yeah, we were changing the wedge around in the car on every pit stop, and we just finally hit it on that last one. And, uh, you know, the guys were doing a great job, and we were about to overcome the problems we were having, and I was beginning to feel comfortable, and then something happened. Well, you've had a lot of success here at Daytona up until right now. You've taken, I think, about eighty-seven or $88,000 away from here before this race started today. Well, we were hoping to do well today, Ned. Uh, just for the national championship, uh, you know, the points are today, and they haven't the other races paid any points. So uh, it really put us behind the eight ball. We fell out at Riverside, and we're out here again today. But uh, I know Junior and all this Mountain Dew bunch will come back real well. So your first Daytona 500 win is still somewhere else. Yeah, it is. I, I hope hope maybe next year. <laughs> God. Well, I'll tell you, Ken, it's awfully hard for a fellow to smile under this kind of circumstance, but he managed one. Distressing time for Darrell Waltrip having to fall out in the 118th lap of the 23rd Daytona 500. Covering up intense disappointment there, like the true racer he is, uh, put on a tremendous display this afternoon, an absolutely violent disappointment for him. The action continues to swirl around Bobby Allison and his Pontiac. It stays in first place. And now the second place car has been reported as car number one, the Baker machine trying to make a run for it here today. But nobody at this point seems to be able to stay with it. He may be able to run by his lonesome. Well, we saw that in the qualifying race, and he is, in fact, putting quite a lot of daylight between himself and Buddy Baker in car number one. The only thing is, uh, at this stage in the race, is how is Neil Bonnet going to drag himself up through that multiple car draft? If he can catch up with him again, he's the only man here that can really stay with him. Allison pulling away from that bunch of cars. Getting some slower cars now between himself and the uh, hounding mob behind him, led by Buddy Baker, who's also put a bit of distance between himself and Ricky Rudd. Foyt slowing down, coming on the pit road, retiring. A.J. Foyt is out of it. A.J. Foyt going back to the garage area, number 51, has dropped out of the race. Back in a year ago, he had trouble. Early on in the going, there you see him going back around the garage wall. We will try to get a word. Huh. <coughs> Don't send me down, pal. Number 28. There he is, Bobby Allison, still in front. Donnie Allison's car, number 12, is on pit road. He is two laps down. For Kenny Childers' car. They've had a bad day today, too. Donnie Allison, a very strong runner here at Daytona, but this again, another driver whose day it is not. S slowing down dramatically through the trioval, going very slowly into turn one, number 21. Something is amiss with Neil Bonnet's number 21 Wood Brothers car. The spoiler is loose on the left rear of number 21, down in turns one and two. Car number 28, Allison in front. The guy he ran with in the first half of the race is having real problems. There you see the second turn as we await number 21 to come around. Presumably, it will be pitting the next time by. There is number 21 in the back straightaway, well off the pace. Oh, you can see the spoiler on the left side of the trunk lid seems to have come off. It's but broken that, right down. It says they're split spoilers, and it looks like the left half has dropped off. Number 15, Benny Parsons is going back on the track. Parsons has changed the radiator, and he is returning to the purpose. Here is 21 coming in, Bonnet. Now they've been fiddling about adding the odd half inch, and he's pulling into the garage area. All of a sudden, just past the halfway mark in the race, the attrition rate continues to climb, and going back to the garage area, Neil Bonnet. Now, all the spoilers. Oh, yeah, you see the spoilers lying down on the back there. Well, they've been fiddling around with the odd half inch, so you can imagine what half of the whole spoiler would do to the handling. There's Ned Jarrett walking over to try and get a word with Neil Bonnet. Allison having trouble. Remember, those two cars running together usually run faster than one car by itself. Down to Ned Jarrett. Think what went wrong? Is 
I was out in the fast lane. I couldn't get in, and the, the car just virtually shook to pieces. The clutch lever messed up. I was trying to get it in gear going back out, and it's tore the clutch linkage or something off the car, and the clutch is just slipping. The car right now is just shaking all over when that tire equalized just about came off the ground coming off two over there. Your, one of your, part of your rear spoiler has moved down and, and is out of place. Did that cause that? <laughs> well, Ned, I don't know. You know, when that tire blew up, uh, the car had been getting a little bit harder to drive. I saw the spoiler down, but the car was just running so good, I didn't know what to do. You know, the Wood Brothers, Pure Later. But uh, when that tire equalized, it just virtually took this, shook this thing to pieces. I couldn't even see where I was at. And it's just a heck of a note as good as the car was running. Well, I know your dad watching back home. Sorry to see you out of it here. Well, Dad, you know, we'll get them next time. Now back to you, Ken. And next time for these people comes one week from now when these same stars go to Richmond, Virginia to run on a half-mile track, much like where it all began. The Daytona 500 continues in a moment. Elliot Forbes Robinson and Joe Milliken Pitt. The cars move into the 132nd lap. When they come by, next time they will have completed 330 miles, 68 laps, 170 miles to go. We still have more than 10 cars in the lead lap, but breaking away from the field, there you see the distances. Bobby Allison way down into turn number three, and then a tremendous battle for second place. But Allison is beginning to draw away for Waddell Wilson prepared number 28 running in a solo performance at this time and looking outstanding. Well, he must have seven or 800 feet of daylight between him and himself. Buddy Baker here in car number one. And look at that group trying to take away third spot. Ricky Rudd, Richard Penny, Dale Earnhardt. Ricky Rudd in third, Richard Penny in fourth, Dale Earnhardt in fifth as they exit the tri-oval and running in sixth down on the inside. David Pearson beginning to move in again. David He's up Pearson, to fifth. Number 16 there, David Pearson, the Silver Fox, also running the only Chevrolet Monte Carlo here. Sort of car that people said wouldn't run at Daytona, but not in the hands of David Pearson. He's right there. Harry Gant has pulled on pit road another time. Let's check the attrition rate for you as Harry Gant comes back on the track. We're up to pit stops under green this time. Eight cars have officially retired from the race. Blackie Wengren crashed early on. He's all right. Blown engine on Terry Labonte. Bruce Hill wrecked his car. Richard Childress out. The leader is pitting. Darrell Walter is out. A.J. Foyt, Neil Bonnet, and Kyle Petty is the latest retiree as we watch Bobby Allison pull on pit road. And Buddy Baker pulls on right behind him. This is where pit work in NASCAR racing, NASCAR Grand National Racing, is so important. To Brock Yates. Suddenly, Buddy Baker's come into the standings here very quickly. I just talked to Haas Ellington to say the car's running very, very well. Buddy's very pleased. The windshield is holding together, and they're in this race. Indeed, they are. There's Allison coming back on the track. This is going to switch the positions around. Ronnie Thomas may be folding up his hand today and stepping away at the table. He started to come out, and now the car is running a miss down on pit road. Now we have a car stalled in pit road in the fast lane of pit road. That's going to cause trouble. That's Ronnie Thomas, number 25, having problems with his red and yellow car down here. Ricky Rudd pitting, Dale Earnhardt pitting, and something is amiss on Rudd's car. Yeah, the rear brakes locked up when he <laughs> tried to slide into that gap there. These pits are getting pretty congested. There's the car that's having trouble out there in the fast lane on pit road. At 130 laps, 325 miles just before the pit stops began, we had seven cars running the lead lap. They were Allison running in first with the second position at that time belonging to Baker, the third position to Rudd, the fourth position Earnhardt, fifth Petty, going sixth was Pearson, seventh was Elliott Forbes Robinson, eighth as we watch Petty Petty was number 90, Jody Ridley, with the 10th position, Elliott, the 11th position to Milliken. 12th on the field was Pond, or 11th on the field was Pond, and 12th was Cale Yarborough. 13th, two laps down was Bill Ellswick. 14th was Stan Barrett. There's your new leader, number 16. 
15th was Johnny Rutherford, and running 16th was Don Whittington. Now, that was at 130 laps, 325 miles, with the average speed at 163.021, not a record. The record, 172.540 by Moneymaker one year ago. And David Pearson heads for the pits. Pearson, 105 Grand National wins in his career. Won several Firecracker 400s here on the 4th of July. And has picked up one Daytona 500-mile victory. That incredible finish when he and Richard Petty crashed coming out of turn number four, spun down into the tri-oval, and Pearson limped across the finish down to the grass to win the race with Petty second. The action, and look at the side of David Pearson from his brush with Cale Yarborough earlier in that 100 mile, 90 mile an hour shot up in turn number two, and he's still out there. The Silver Fox comes back on the track, wholesale change of positions. We will continue with more live coverage of the Daytona 500 after this word from your local station. Welcome back to NASCAR Classics and our look back at the 1981 Daytona 500. I'm Matt Yoakum. Bobby Allison didn't let down as the halfway point of the race approached. He had already led more than half of the first 100 laps and seemed to be cruising to victory. But like many drivers have said before, during 500 miles, anything can and usually does happen. As the second half of the race approached, pit strategy would begin to reveal a new side of the event. And there we see the leader, number 28, coming into the pits. We assume this is a regular stop for him, but this is going to be the final stop. When Bobby came in, he got two tires and a full tank of fuel. Okay. And so then everybody followed suit. All the rest of the top four or five, they'd come in, they'd stop, and they'd change tires. These pits are getting pretty congested. I told Richard somewhere during the halfway of the race, I said, Richard, we're not right wearing no tires. The tires are not wearing at all. And they're not picking us up any. I said, I don't know what it'll come down to at the end of the race. Just bear with me. Richard Petty, the six-time Daytona 500-mile champion, is on pit road. Bill said, OK, pit next time. I start down pit road, and he says, one can of gas. And at that time, I said, we won the race. I mean, that's when I knew we won the race. Ever, ever how many laps it was, I run wide open. I was passing them three abreast. It didn't make no difference. If I caught them and they were side by side, I'd go down or go up against the wall. Because I knew if he had the better car, that I had to run just as hard as I could and get just as far ahead as I could. Let's see how the action unfolds as we head back to the 23rd annual Daytona 500. Here's Gant trying to get a lap back another time. He is at least two laps back. He must be a long way now. At 150 laps, 375 miles, it is an average speed of 165.059, which is far away from Bobby Allison's mark in 1980 of 174.014 at this point of the race. Bobby's brother Donnie has just pitted and come back on the track. The standings, as Gant gets back out in front, 28, Allison is again your leader. Baker is in second. Penny is in third. Rudd is fourth. Earnhardt fifth. In sixth is Jody Ridley. Seventh is Elliott. A lap down in eighth is Milliken with ninth position belonging to Elliott Forbes Robinson. Two laps down in tenth is Lenny Kahn. Here's Allison up in front going around Gant again as they sort it out in that picking up a lap, losing a lap situation for Gant. Eleventh position harbors car number 27. And Kaylee Arborough's back there. Then three laps down is car number 12, Donnie Allison, with, 20, uh, with number 22, the leading rookie in the race. The leading rookie in the race, Elliot Forbes Robinson, the second best rookie, is the 13th position, which is Stan Barrett from Bishop, California. Barrett is running 13th overall in the field. The 14th position is Bill Ellswick, and 15th overall is John Rutherford. Bobby Allison still in front, still looking like he is building Sterner stuff with his car than some others out here today. But Buddy Baker has been flexing some muscles of recent as we move into the last quarter of the race. Let's go to Ned Jarrett down on Pit Road. 
Ken, I'm still in the garage area. As you know, I've been spending quite a bit of time here as the cars are going out of the race at a quick rate now. We have 13 cars that are out of the race. You can see some of those in the background. They had to just park them and call it a day, and the latest one was Benny Parsons. He pulled it in here. Remember a little earlier, he had a radiator problem. They changed that radiator. It's still the one they put on there. It did not do the cooling job, so he had to just pull it in and park it for the day. So it looks like the pace they're setting out there is really taking its toll, and it might even pick up as the afternoon goes on. 43 lead changes thus far in the race. Here's Baker going underneath Harry again, and he'd like to make it 44. Coming around this time, there will be 159 laps on the books, 397 and a half miles complete. There's Ricky Rudd in number 90. He is running in the sixth position. Cody Ridley in number 90. Here a year out of Cody Ridley, correct. driving a car like Neil Bonnets and Benny Parsons, but they don't seem to have been able to get quite the speed out of their car. But the other two Fords, I thought they might show a little bit more form here. But I'm informed by Judy Dunlavey, his crew chief, that he's just going to hang in there. And in fact, he is in fact hanging in quite well. He's running in seventh spot. Here is Baker pulling up on the outside of Allison as they left. Jody Ridley going to turn number three. Richard Petty still maintaining third. There you see him behind Baker. It's at this stage of the race that fatigue starts to play a factor, and according to Richard Petty, the worst part of this race is not physical. I suppose uh, actually the cars don't drive any harder or anything. You just have to do more driving than uh, what you used to. But uh, the driving part you don't worry about. It's just the idea of saying, you know, if I mess up a little, that man I'm running with messes up a little, we, we can be in deep trouble. He never said a truer word, as we've seen before many times on this television screen when these guys have a crash, it very often, almost invariably, involves someone else. There we see Bobby Allison, number 28, leading Buddy Baker, number one, down the back straight, into turn three. Baker, on his own, seems to be able to run lower than the others. Richard Petty has now pulled up to third spot, right behind Buddy Baker. Harry Gann still in there, number 47, but of course, some laps off the pace. Right behind Gann is Ricky Rudd and Dale Earnhardt. Maybe Dale's just biding his time now. The lead has changed for the 45th time. Buddy Baker is now in front with Bobby Allison in second. Make that 46th lead change as they move towards the record for this race. We'll give you that in a moment. Baker back in front, Allison in second, and Richard Petty stays third on the field. Back here is another lead change. Make it 47 as Bobby Allison goes in front. Dale Earnhardt dives to the inside and takes second, or tries to take second. No Dale, way. Dale Earnhardt about to get boxed in there by a bat marker or a slower car. Dale just having a go here to see uh, where the run-up point's going to be because he's obviously going to want to try to win this race. He's been hanging around there in fourth spot. There's just a few car lengths behind the leaders. Now he's going to try and take it for a few laps uh, just to see what it feels like out there. 14 cars out, latest retirees, Cecil Gordon, James Hilton, Lenny Pond. They are the latest retirees. 14 of the 42 starters are out, and now Earnhardt begins to put the pressure on. One more pit stop. It'll be crucial if it's under green when they turn these cars over to the team on pit road. There's Dale Earnhardt, defending champion of NASCAR, making a run at Bobby Allison, who has a very shallow lead as he comes out of turn four. I thought I saw a bit of smoke coming out of either Dale Earnhardt's or Bobby Allison's car there as they went into turn one that last time around. An astonishing race as they wheel down through the tri-oval and go back into turn number one. The crowd on their feet about this one. They're sensing that it's building for some sensational kind of finish. Allison in front, but he's been run down by Baker, and Baker's car is handling very loose at the present time. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. We're standing by with Maurice Petty. Of course, he's the brother of Richard Petty out there. Richard's style over the years has been just hanging in there as close as he can and then make a move at the end. Is that sort of the way it's working today, Maurice? Well, we're just sort of hoping we can hang on long enough to be there when the end comes around to have a shot at it. So we'd all got our fingers crossed. What do you talk to Richard about on the radio? They just give him the time. Dale gives him the time. What everybody else is doing is a caution. He tells him as a caution what a wreck is. 
But you don't give him no advice on driving, huh? No, no advice on driving. He does his own style. Well, Maurice did a little bit of driving himself about 15 or 20 years ago. They're due for their last pit stop, or what they hope will be their last pit stop, in about five or six laps. Elliott Forbes Robinson pitting car number 86. Back straight away. There's the Pontiac out in front. There's Elliott Forbes Robinson on pit road. Next time by 30 laps to go. Only 30 laps remaining when they wheel through the tri oval. This time through, 170 laps will have been completed, and there will be 75 miles running to the finish of this $770,000 race. Passing flag is out. Oh, Kinder waving the blue flag. That's the passing flag. Trying to keep those slower cars down. miles an hour as he goes into turn three and four running high there but not as high as buddy baker following in second place in that red car number one and harry gant in car number 47 is still hanging in there with this leading bunch although he himself is some laps down and there we see the blue flag this is given to the drivers the slower cars to tell them to move over the hot shoes are coming through and of course in nascar racing here at daytona that means stay to the low groove Give the high, fast lane to the faster cars. Some people acknowledge it, some don't quite so well. We have the same flag in road racing, and it basically just means to move over. Baker trying to fend off Dale Earnhardt, who stays right with him. Baker into three and four again. Richard Petty just waits back there for something to happen. Remember what happened here two years ago? Petty just sat there and waited, and at the finish, <laughs> well, there he we had all kinds of action. There we see Baker and Hunt and Richard Petty hanging into third spot. Baker in second, Earnhardt in third, Petty in fourth. 47 is back on pit road. I think we're about to see a rash of pit stops on the green. Uh, they're just about coming up to the right amount of laps, 172 laps down. They must be ready for a pit stop within the next three or four laps at the outside. So we're going to see some really heavy pit work because this is going to be the last scheduled stop. This is definitely not a pit stop to uh, mix up. Next pit stop should be the final one in this race if there is no yellow. Next pit stop should be the last one. Just outside our booth, a man is watching, watching this Pontiac with more than just passing concern. That man there, one of the most famous people in American motorsport, that Smokey Eunuch, 1962. He built the car that won the pole, won the semi-feature, won the Daytona 500. Smokey Eunuch, who took it all, with Fireball Roberts driving, watching this Pontiac. And he hasn't been here for a few years. And I don't think a lot of us will forget when he brought Curtis Turner here and they went nearly 180 miles. They did go over 180 miles an hour. First time. And that was the guy, Smokey Eunuch, that put those cars together. And he is a resident of this town. And there we see the leader, number 28, coming into the pits. We assume this is a regular stop for him, but this is going to be the final stop. He seems to be going awfully slowly to he me. He is though. running slowly coming in. Very, he slowed down very early. Earnhardt has come in in front of him. Baker has come in in front of him as he really came off the binders. Now he picks up speed and pulls down in. There is R28. Let's go to Brock Gates. Uh, they came in quickly. They're a little bit surprised. The engine, they were out of gas. The engine just been fired up. Certainly Bobby Allison fell off because they were planning to come in in another couple of laps. It was a surprise stop. They changed the two to lot right side tires and they're back out, but it could have been a major disaster if he'd, if he'd run out of gas a little bit earlier than he did. Well, that's going to build some suspense into this one. If they run to the finish from here, we've had two cars come in and get back out. Ricky Rudd's waving his hand there out the left side of the car. Now, what's his problem? Now, remember, he has no radio, so he's communicating by hand signal, smoke signal, or any way he can to J.C. Elder about his problems today. 
170 laps complete, 425 miles officially down, and the speed is 167 miles per hour, as opposed to Baker's record a year ago, 176. And now we see guess who in the lead of the Daytona 500. Car number 43, Richard Petty, a six-time winner in this Daytona 500. Ricky Rudd, number 88, following him. Buddy Baker, number one, third. And Bobby Allison dropped back to fourth spot. Seems like old times. Richard Petty back in front of the Daytona 500. Ricky Rudd holding on pit road. Coming in for his stop, he has been running second. He had five cars running that lead lap. Rudd was on the tail end of it. Yes, I'm right here. Let's go to Brock. Ricky Rudd in this green flag stop. They're making a right side tire change and back underway. Everybody has made just two tire changes, so uh, it looks as if the status hasn't changed appreciably other than that coasting stop that Bobby Allison made. Let's see if he can get it back. Let's see if Richard Petty will come in this time. Looks like he's coming down. He is getting ready to come on pit road. Richard Petty. The six-time Daytona 500-mile champion is on pit road to Ned Jarrett. One of the fastest pit crews in the business, Dale Lindman, the crew chief on this car. Maurice Petty, his brother, directing the traffic here as they go to work on the rocks. They're not changing tires. A change of pace here for the Petty crew. They're only adding gasoline and either way, a very quick pit stop. What strategy? We'll see how it works. 176 laps complete. Up front, the battle for the lead. Number one, Buddy Baker, commanding. 88 and two, staying right there with him. 43 has pitted. Number one, Allison has some catching up to do. Well, Richard Petty took a chance there. It took 6.8 seconds only to put gas in. And he has maintained his lead even with the pit stop. And he's got about a thousand foot. 1500 foot lead on that group racing for second place which is Buddy Baker, Ricky Rudd and Dale Earnhardt. Behind them, trailing them by another 8 to 900 feet is Bobby Allison, number 28 who has led more laps in this race than anybody else. Let's get the interval now back to Bobby Allison. There's Petty back on the track. What a difference that stop made for him as he did not change tires. The crews using various strategy to try to get the cars home from here. Leaders coming around and enjoying first place as they come back into the trioval. Another time, it is Ricky Rudd. Baker in second, Earnhardt in third. Then it's about two seconds back to Bobby Allison running in the next position. Correction, 43, your leader. Then the battle with 88 as he did not take on tires. Petty maintaining first, all by himself. Question being, can he stay there till the finish? Well, if he runs out the race now, he's got another 20 on it, uh, 23 laps to go, and he's already done about 30 laps on those tires, so they'll still only end up with about 50 laps on them, which is no real problem. They won't wear out, but they just won't be quite as quick as the tires on those new cars. Can Petty run this set of tires to the finish and win the 500? We'll know shortly. A piece of pit stop strategy by number 43, Richard Petty, may be the catalyst that gives him a victory here for the seventh time in the Daytona 500 this afternoon. Right now, he has the advantage. Bobby Allison is back in the fifth position and trying to catch up with three other people who are number one, Buddy Baker in second, the 88 car of Ricky Rudd, the two car of Dale Earnhardt, and rapidly running them down is the man who sat on the pole, Allison. Let's go get the story from the number 43 pits. Here's Ned Jarrett. Ken, as we noted, the Petty crew only added gasoline, and they only added one can. These cans hold 11 gallons. Now, when Petty pitted, there were still about 55 miles to go. They can run about 100 miles on a tank of gasoline here, and he was pretty close to out when he came in, so that's going to be very, very close, particularly with him out there running by himself. When they run in a draft, they're able to conserve some gasoline, but now he doesn't have the advantage of those front-running cars to draft off of. Of course, he picks up every slow car he possibly can, but will he burn more gas and too much so that he can't make it on the gas that they took on? It's going to be awfully close, as his pit crew here reports. Well, not changing the tires was a, 
was a really uh, not much of a gamble, but not putting in that second can of gas is going to be incredibly close, I would imagine. And the interval is 9.6 seconds between the first car and the second car of 88. So he is, in fact, pulling away from that second group because it's gone up from 8.7. There's the second place battle. Out they come from turn number four. Down to the line, Petty taking a tremendous gamble to try and win this 500. So that's Ricky Rudd, Bobby Allison, Baker and Dale Earnhardt, and Allison wound them in from about a three and a half second deficit in four laps. It just gives you the idea of the strength of that car of Bobby Allison's. That Pontiac of his has worked so well all the time. And just look at him actually pulling away from that group, group as they drive. Now, can he on his own? Wind in Richard Petty, who's got half a length of straightaway on him. 183 laps, 17 laps to go. Petty in front. The interval expands a little, David. It does again. It's gone up to 10 seconds now. But Bobby Allison is leading that group now. Can he, in fact, help to wind them all back up to the back of Richard Petty to make this an incredibly close finish? And, of course, of course, as far as Richard's concerned, he may not even make it to the finish. Checking the interval. Between the first and the second place car 9.8 the interval between richard petty on the point number 28 allison we've seen some very good driving this afternoon there's no doubt about it these cars are to have seen this is reflected in the low average speed you know compared to last year they are difficult to drive everybody's kept their head very well and ricky rudd in particular has put on a great display look at richard petty right up to the wall this is that wall like a handrail as he comes down into the trioval another time, Richard Petty. Let's review back. In the sixth position at this moment is car number 90, Jody Ridley. In the seventh spot is the number nine, Elliot. Then a lap down is number 75, Millican and eighth. Elliot Forbes Robinson is ninth, and we have an update on that report. At the present time, they are now showing in the sixth position, Elliot. Seventh position, Ridley. Eighth position to Yarborough, ninth position to Millican, and tenth position to Stan Barrett in the Hal Needham car. The eleventh position to car number 57, Bill Ellswick, and the twelfth position belongs to Donnie Allison. 167 mile an hour average as Richard Petty rolls the dice pretty hard against the concrete, gambling to win this Daytona 500. Laps to go. Richard Petty's lead is decreasing. His lead is now down to eight and six ten seconds. What's the strategy? Ned Jarrett has a report. Dale Inman, the crew chief. Dale, you've had to stop watching them every lap. What's happening? Ned, we're running pretty good. We're pretty well holding on. We've lost about a second to him in the last four or five laps. He's coming up on some lap traffic. Right What's now, that? We just picked up about a half a second on a draft car. So we, should, we got ten laps to go. And right now we've got a nine second lead. And when he lost a little ground that lap and we gained a little bit. So there's 10 hard laps to go, Ned. And you're gonna be pretty close on gas, aren't you? It's gonna be close on gas, but we're safe on gas, Ned. Hey, that's Dale Inman. He's clocking it off here, Ken, hoping that they can count him down and see Bobby Allison a little distance behind him when the white flag drops. Lapping the 10th place car, number 22, Stan Barrett, is number 43, Richard Petty. Interval stays, it's gone back to nine seconds. Second place car is Bobby Allison. He's led it almost all the way, but now Richard Petty once again is exerting the strength of his Petty team. Who first came here for the very first race in 1959, his dad won it. He went out early in the going that year, but here he is coming on strong today, going for his seventh. And we saw the blue flag, Harold Kinder waving the blue flag at this flock of slower cars, and Richard Petty's got to wind his way through, going high through turns one and two, off two, onto the back straight. He laps Bill Ellswick, he goes after Sanders, the rookie in the Henley Gray car. Petty is caught in traffic, and Allison's coming down out of turn number two and gaining some ground back. Bobby Allison is definitely gathering ground back as car number 43, Petty, goes up into turn number three. Allison is still nine seconds behind, and we're down to only eight laps to go. Well, it will be eight laps in about another half a second. Let's go to Brock Gates with Waddell Wilson. Waddell, one simple question. Can he catch him? Can he catch him? No, I don't think there's enough time left. He gambled, and it looks like he's won by doing it. Although we cannot take it all the way on our right side tire. The gamble was 
was on Petty's stop. Could you have made it if you hadn't run out of gas on that last stop? I didn't hear. Okay. It's so noisy down here, Ken, that I can't really make any sense with him, but he appears to have conceded this race. Waddell, one more question. Was the gamble on Petty's part what beat you, or did you run out of gas as well? Well, see, we run the car as far as it go on gas, but see, not only did we have to put go to the second can of gas, we had to change our right side tire. And I think all they did was one can of gas. We gave them a big advantage over us. Okay. Waddle Wilson, a dejected man, and certainly a brilliant victory for the Petties if they can pull this off against a much faster automobile. Petty ready to try and lap Jeff Bodine and Kale Yarborough as he exits turn two. Checking the interval another time. Checking them as they go down the back straightaway. Allison had clear sailing the last lap where Petty had to get around some traffic. He still has a nine second lead with only seven laps to go. They aren't winding him in at all. They're making no appreciable ground on him at all. Jody Ridley pulling into the pits number 90. Crowd in seventh spot. Just can't believe this one. It looked like it was going to be Allison's almost all day, but in the last moments, it was in the very last lap in 1979 when Bobby Allison, Donnie Allison, Kaylee Arbor, remember it was, it was Bobby and Kale that were involved. Donnie pulled around. Well, now this time, it's been Bobby and Richard right toward the finish, and it's been the pit crews that have made the difference. Five laps to go next time, Bob. I'm not counting the fact that Richard Petty has won this race yet because there are five laps to go and no race is won until the checkered flag is dropped. But if he does win, it'll be absolutely unbelievable because the Bobby Allison Pontiac has been the strongest car all month and it was clearly the strongest car in this race so far, having led 117 laps. Petty comes across the line. We're checking on that interval back to the second place car at the last Allison. Interval stands at eight and seven tenths of a second. 8.7 laps running down. Working the 196 right now. And Buddy Baker and Dale Earnhardt, for some reason or another, have dropped right off the pace. And it looks like young Ricky Rudd could finish up a very strong third in this race. Be a great race for the Gardner brothers. Richard Petty sitting in there, looking unconcerned in that close-up shot, but just look how high he gets in the middle of turn three and four there. Nobody runs close to the wall than Richard Petty. No one uses the tri-oval like Richard Petty. He likes to pass there. Oh, well, there's the signal. Harold Kinder putting out the marker to Richard Petty. Four to go. Into turn one. Again, runs through turn one, goes in low, comes right up high. There's Allison running in second. Interval staying now at about eight and five tenths of a second. There's Petty out in front. Richard Petty and his crew. Interval comes down and shrinks a little to seven and six tenths of a second. 7.6, now the interval. Allison is going all out to try and catch Petty. Absolutely willing that car on at this stage in the game. Foot pressed, absolutely mashed to the floor. We heard Lenny Pond say he couldn't run more than five laps wide open around here. You can rest assured that both Richard Petty and Bobby Allison are going around this track absolutely full throttle all the way. And whoever's got the best chassis set up is getting through these turns best, losing less speed and pulling down the straights faster. There's Bobby Allison trying for his 62nd career win in this Daytona 500. Looking up from under, as we look at the interval another time, it's down to six and nine tenths of a second between 43 and 28, the second place car. There you see Rutherford, who's running back in 12th. Richard Petty going for his 193rd career win in Grand National Racing. And still to come, there's Allison coming to the line as we check that interval another time. It continues to shrink, getting closer all the time. It's now six and a half seconds, but time is running out. A brilliant maneuver by Dale Inman and Maurice Petty may have given 
their cousin and brother, respectively, this Daytona 500. Well, a lot of it depends on the driver, too. Richard must have said to them, don't change the right side tires. He must have told them not to change them. He was happy with the way it was set up. And that's what he told them to do, and they didn't. And they did a 6.8 second pit stop, and that's what's given him this race. It looks like he's going to win by about six and a half seconds. White flag coming up. One lap to go for Richard Petty, who looks like he's on his way to his 193rd career win. I'll tell you, I want to be there the day he wins 200. The crowd up on their feet. One of the most beloved subscribers in the history of the sport. Going down into turn number two. You are watching an incredible moment in the history of motorsport. Here is a man winning the most difficult, the most prestigious stock car race there is for the seventh time, Bobby Allison. A sort no of win situation. The sort of strategy he pulled here is like sinking at about a 90-foot putt to win the uh, US Open by one hole. Out of turn number four, Richard Petty holding on to that lead like a hammerhead shark. Here he comes, coming down, seeking out. And is he slowing down? Is he running out of fuel? He's coming across the line slowly, but he takes the checkered flag. And a car is in the wall. Stan Barrett has crashed just at the finish. Number 22, Barrett, has walled his automobile. Richard Petty has won it. Right at the finish, Stan Barrett has crashed car number 22. He's all the way up against the wall in turn number four, coming right down by our camera, holding it up there on the wall. He was running in 10th position. We have a replay of that incident. There is Petty, the winner. We'll meet him in victory lane in just a moment. Let's take a look at what happened to number 22, way down to the bottom. He got on the apron at the bottom of the bank, and that's just absolutely fatal. Sent him straight up into the wall. It looks like he'd already hit the wall once and sent him down to the bottom. What a shame for Stan Barrett. Turn four, last corner, last lap. Boy, I mean, that is tough to take. The crowd up and waiting now. Stan Barrett's going to drive this car across. He slid it all the way down the wall, stayed in the wall, and he's going to come across the line. How about that? His first Daytona 500. Looks like he's still going to finish in 10th position. Stan Barrett is coming across the strike. That's all right. The crowd is awaiting Richard Petty. Here he comes in. And what a response he is getting for the 100,000 gathered here today. The, uh, the disappointment in the Bobby Allison pit would be almost more than you could stand. It must be just absolutely intense. They had this race locked up all month, and they just somehow blew it with only 20-odd laps to go. Well, here is one of the great masters of the sport, Richard Petty, scoring his 193rd career win. Uh, it would be something to be with him for number 200. No one has ever done it in the history of the game, won that many races in any form of motorsport, and he has just out-snookered them here in the 500, David. Well, he's only got seven races to go to that magic 200. Boy, what a figure. Some people are happy if they win two races, and here we have a man that's won the Daytona 500 seven times, and nobody else has won it twice. We'll try to give you in just a moment a rundown. There's Ralph Salvino from the uh, sponsors of the organization. He has been a big petty enthusiast for some 20 years in the blue jacket. Well, this right by Allison's pit. He'll go right by Allison's pit to go into victory lane. Uh, happy family. Linda Petty. Richard is now a grandfather, you know, and I'm sure that the youngest member of the Ketty generation is watching this one. Well, he's probably here at the race. He hasn't missed one. He's about four months old. I think he's seen two or three races. Absolutely incredible. Ralph Salvino looking through the screen at Petty, telling him what a great job he's done. And Ralph, of course, obviously extremely pleased. Well, this is the one they all shoot for. This is the one. Of course, the next biggest one is the World 600 at Charlotte, and you'll see that on CBS. Come the Memorial Day weekend. I don't know what they're going to do when he does win 200 races. They're obviously going to have to strike some special award because happen. no one else is going to get anywhere near it. Sports Illustrated is going to have to put him on the cover. He's never been there. And there is one of the great sportsmen, one of the great race drivers of our time. Here he comes into victory lane. He certainly Richard deserves Petty. a cover of Sports Illustrated.
trying to get down to Victory Lane to get a word with him. The history of this Daytona Speedway is much the history of the Petty family. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. When Richard Petty comes into Victor Lanes, he brings a crowd with him. He, no race driver has more fans than this fella. As he crawls out, he flashes that big smile. Richard, you pull one up. Yeah. Uh, he on them just outfigured him a little bit. Okay, there. Right <laughs> and, uh, you know, we run all day long. We run with them. We couldn't outrun them. They couldn't outrun us. And they just uh, outsmarted them in the pits, and that's what won the race. Richard, I asked you the other day what it took to win this 500. This is your seventh one, and you said you had to have a lot of luck, but really luck wasn't it today. Well, I tell you, I had a lot of luck just to miss everything that was going on out there, and I had a lot of luck that we run all day and didn't have no problems. And then we were fortunate enough to make the right decision on gambling right at last, and, uh, you know, then our, our luck ran out. You know, I mean, it worked out, so... Uh, couldn't have been planned any better. Richard, how much of a gamble was that? Was the tires getting thin, and were you close on gas? No, uh, the tires were no problem at all. We could, uh, Dale told me right after the first, second pit stop, said tires are no problem. We can run them if we need to later on in the race. And uh, so they had it all planned, and so it worked out good because it wasn't a caution. If it been a caution, then it had been a heck of a race. Richard, you have 500 miles now with these new cars. Everybody was very concerned about them going into the race. Your thoughts now? They're still terrible, terrible squirrely, I tell you. I'm, I'm not, not a whole lot better than the rest of them. I think that uh, by myself, I was pretty good. But when I get with three or four of them, it was, uh, it was really bad. But I wasn't as bad as some of the rest of them. Why are they so squirrely, as you say? It's just uh, aerodynamics, just the way the car's made. And there's just not a whole lot we can do about it right now. We'll work it out. What, what can you, you, you said not a whole lot you can do, but do you have any suggestions for them? <laughs> I don't know. That fastback Pontiac deal didn't, didn't handle any better than we did. So, uh, yeah, right now, I got no suggestion. All I know is my car... Handle better than everybody else, and we won the race, and I'm tickled to Are you just going to keep winning races forever? I'm going to keep on trying, Ned. You can bet on that. Right now, we're getting ready to go back to Victory Lane, where the celebration continues for Richard Petty. His first cousin, who's been with him for every race but two in his entire career, is standing by with Ned Jerry. That's Dale Enman, seven-time champion, seven-time winner of the Daytona 500. Dale, what a brilliant move you fellas made out there. Well, Ned, we kind of had it planned for a while. Our radios weren't working too good, and uh, so there's so much wind in the car, and then the, the other guys kind of slipped in on us before we was ready for them, and uh, we, we'd had it planned that way. The, if it had been a caution, we'd have had the race. But uh, it was far down the line, Ned, that we'd had it figured that way for a good bit, and we was hoping we could catch them changing tires. Richard said that uh, he was not concerned about the tires. I'm sure that you had measured them all along and knew exactly how far you could go. There was no tire wear at, at all in 125 mile races. There was no, there was no tire wear all week. And uh, we had projected that we could go uh, right at a full race without changing left side rubber. Dale winning this race goes back a long way. Just what happened here today was not the total story. <laughs> we worked our rears off Ned to get ready for this race and uh, a lot of families have sacrificed because we, we've uh, worked night and day to get ready. When you say sacrifice, what do you mean? Sometimes you have to put your family aside, it seems like, to get the car ready. Well, I'll tell you, that this crew really knows how to do that, and I know how appreciated you folks are for the, the dedication that the crew put in the effort in bringing this car into Vickard Lane. Congratulations again, Dave. Thank you, Ned. Mary, I'll be home tonight. Okay, tells Mama he'll be home tonight. Boy, they don't waste much time. Once they get that victory under their belt, they load up and go home and get ready for the next one. The next one will be Richmond, Virginia for the Petty Crew. We're getting ready to give you a rundown here, hopefully a word with the second place finisher in this Daytona 500. The Petty family, they've done it again. Won the seventh time for Richard in the 500. Richard Petty has won his seventh Daytona 500 at an average speed of 169.702 miles per hour, or 671 miles per hour, as opposed to the record which stands at 177 miles per hour by Buddy Baker, 177.602 a year ago. It's been another outstanding victory. Every time you talk about Richard Petty, it always sounds like a eulogy, but he is a truly rare individual in the world of sport, and uh, I think you got a little taste of it from his cousin, Dale Inman. They are very special people up there in Level Cross, North Carolina, and we understand that Mrs. Petty is standing by with Ned Jarrett right now.
fun, Ken. We had him on C the grandson on CBS last August from Talladega, and Linda Petty is holding her only grandson here. Linda is very happy. Well, now he's trying to get the microphone. He wants to talk on this thing, Linda. <laughs> he wants to tell you how happy we are. <laughs> well, I know that you are very happy. You know, he could take my job away here if, uh, if he wasn't careful. He probably would. I know that you're very happy to be in here for the seventh time. Thrilled to death. We just can't believe it. We've had a terrible week down here and um, just had a lot of things go wrong, but today it all went right. Tell us about some of those things. We didn't know that. Well, we had a, a blown engine or two, and the guys were getting up every morning at 5.30 out here at 6, working every day and uh, running two cars. It was just a lot of hours and a lot of hard work. No. And uh, Mars even had to go back home for two days and do a little more work on an engine and come back and and when something like this happens, it's, it's just all pays off. And we're just so thankful to the good Lord because he has just really blessed us. Linda, you've been following your husband, of course, for about 22 years in this business. You've seen a lot of changes over the years and the changes in cars. How concerned were you about all of the concern here with these cars, the new cars? Well, with the smaller wheelbase and the way the wind has blown here all week, we were concerned that the uh, cars would maybe blow around a little bit. But um, Richard's evidently handled real well and ran well because uh, he didn't have any tire, tire wire at all, and was, that was why he was able to not change the tires on the last pit stop. Linda, for the fans, can you describe your feelings when your husband is out there and also you have a son out there running at speeds of 200 miles an hour? Well, I'm concerned, but I just put my faith in the Lord that, you know, that everything will go safe and they'll be looked after and, and a win, lose, or draw, we'll all go home as a family. One more question. What kind of a family life can you build with these fellas gone almost every weekend? Well, it's hard. Your wife was a racer's wife, and you know, but uh, it's hard, but it's just something if you, uh, if you love the man that's out there and you're willing to do it, you give it 100%. And certainly they've given it 100%, Ken. They certainly have given it 100%, David. They are a unique group, the Petties of Level Cross. Let's take a look at the standings now. Richard Petty has won $90,975 today in winning this race. Bobby Allison has finished second, retains the top spot in the national standings. Ricky Rudd, whose best finish was 22nd back here in 1977, comes through with a wonderful third place finish for the Die Guard Racing Team. The fourth place was last year's winner, Buddy Baker, and finishing in fifth was Dale Earnhardt, last year's national champion. We'll review further back the standings in just a moment here on the Daytona 500 for 1981. Petty, Allison, Rudd, Baker, and Earnhardt. Front five cars in the lead lap as they came down for the finish today. Had five cars running. And 49 lead changes is not a record for this race, but it sure was a humbling number as we started the race and thought they might just stabilize and stay in line all day, David. Well, Bobby Allison led 117 of those laps, and I just can't imagine the disappointment that he must be feeling at the moment. They just finally fixed themselves in that last pit stop. The Pettys were just that much cleverer had a very, very short pit stop and went on to win the race for the seventh time, but Bobby must be just about beside himself, I think, with anguish, because they had the strongest car. The cars are going to need a lot of work. They, uh, they all described it. They were very twitchy. Richard didn't use his tires much, which is, could be a bad sign, could be a good sign, but there's going to be a lot of midnight oil burnt before they get these cars right for the rest of the season. There's a long way to go yet, though. Bill Elliott finished in sixth position. Jody Ridley finished in seventh. Kale Yarborough was your eighth place finisher. In ninth was Joe Milliken, and Johnny Rutherford wound up in tenth. The eleventh spot was Ellswick. Uh, the twelfth spot was Donnie Allison. And the thirteenth position was the leading rookie in the race, Stan Barrett, who crashed coming out of the corner up yes, here. very lucky, actually, there. Okay. Running into the wall on the last corner of the last lap and still finishing tenth and getting rookie points. Let's go for a closing thought to Brock Yates. Ken, we're standing here with the background of the Bobby Allison car and a rather shocked and dejected crew as the people mill through the garage area and begin to gather up their thoughts after this incredible finish of the 500-mile race. I think of yesterday when it was pouring rain here. We'd uh, canceled a major event. There was no opportunity to test these cars. 
Throughout the month, as you know, there's been uncertainty and real fear with these automobiles. And as skittish as they were on the racetrack, NASCAR tried very hard to correct the situation. They permitted two uh, running rule changes with the spoilers to stabilize the automobiles. But still, as this race came down to the green flag, there was great apprehension here. I'd never seen it before. It was a, there was an ominous tone about this. I and mean, this is the most safe, the most... Uh, well-run motor racing in the world and yet there was a feeling that maybe people were losing control of it a little bit suddenly this race unwound with almost no accidents a marvelous testimony not to the machines but to the men who control them all afternoon Richard Petty one time told me when it was all over he would want to be remembered as a guy who had a job liked his job and did it well he certainly did today Richard Petty wins the Daytona 500 for David Hobbs, Ned Jarrett, Brock Yates, I'm Ken Squire at the 23rd running of the Daytona 500. Welcome back to NASCAR Classics. Except for a splash of fuel, Bobby Allison would have completely dominated the Daytona 500 in his Pontiac Le Mans. Richard Petty's seventh career Daytona 500 victory would be his last in the Great American Race. Petty may not have been the fastest that Sunday, but his cousin and crew chief, Dale Lemon, would be the smartest. It was his pit call that gave the king the racer's edge. One thing about racing, it's hard to sit down and, and do like the coaches do at the sidelines on a football game and have your play. Because you can have all the plays you want to in just one little incident or a caution flag, a lap before what you figure, or a lap after. So you got to be very versatile and make a quick decision on whatever the circumstance. And that's what Dale done. As quick as Bobby made his stop, and he seen what, that he changed tires and stuff like it, he said, if we can run another lap or two, then we can make it on Dale. And he was that, that close. I mean, if we didn't stop the lap earlier, we wouldn't win the race. A change of pace here for the Petty crew. They're only adding gasoline. What strategy? We'll see how it works. Coming off the fourth turn, the last lap thing ran out of gas. And is he slowing down? Is he running out of fuel? He's coming across the line slowly, but he takes the checkered flag. And I never said anything to anybody. I just went ahead and done the whole deal because I didn't want to make a spectacular deal out of it. You know what I mean? One of them guys think we had plenty of gas. <laughs> The victory was Buick's first NASCAR Winston Cup win since 1955, but it would be the final checkered flag for the team of Richard Petty and Dale Inman, as Dale decided to leave Petty Enterprises after 92 career wins together. It was the end of an era when Inman joined the Rod Osterlund team the following week. For NASCAR Classics, I'm Matt Yoakum. Thanks for joining us for our look back at the 1981 Daytona 500.